they told me about eight and a half years at the current at the current rates. yeah electrical rates but there's some proposed increases that are going to um, push that timeline out a little bit i mean not that i endorse <laughs> increases but it's going to help pay for the project fast enough yeah. Yeah, I think that timeline on the payback is kind of the main question that we had. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know. You could check with the energy district too and see what they anticipate alliance increases are and or if they change how they rate people based on energy. Um, there's some proposals to do something different there too, but I mean, I don't know, but I think checking into all of that before launching the other big. Have you heard something, Mark, about that they're talking about changing the way they deal with, with individual producers? Yeah. And I don't, like I said, that's the service charge could go up probably. I've, I've just heard you know, there will be like a different rate structure or something like that. But I don't know for sure. That's why I said we should check with the, with the energy district and see. At this point, they're required to take any power generation. I believe so, yes. Do you anticipating having generating more than you use on a regular basis? Or the plan was to just kind of zero out all. Yeah. As, as much as we're using right now, or what, what our uh, three year history showed us we were using, is just to <clears throat> cancel that out. We didn't go for anything extra. Yeah, I, I think if you know, it is as it is and the rates are going to go up. We have it budgeted in, now would be the time to do it because it's certainly going to be a payback to save us money over the it's long term savings. Yes. And it's a 30 year warranty on most of the stuff. It's eight and a half years or less from then what's paid for it. And you still, you still have, you know, 22 years of net profit. But yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the life expectancy is 20 years on. Well, that's what the warranty is. It's 30. 30. 30 years. Yeah. yeah. The life expectancy is longer, but that's the warranty. Yeah, the productive. A lot of them have a the level of generation starts falling off after you know, seven years, ten years. I think the coatings are a little bit better now, so the um, life expectancy is a little longer, mm -hmm. and the effectiveness of it is greater. So. How many kilowatt? How many? How many is that for I think there's 147 panels. That's from what I remember. Um, I don't have the name copy. We put it down. Uh, 147 panels that are 450 watt modules. By that point, 147 VSU and 450 watt modules. Whatever that means. <laughs> we got the code here. <laughs> Who's doing it? The quote is from Decor Electric. Yes. They're our primary um, electrician there at the recycling facility. They do most of the solar work in, in the area. I, I think they were they made proposals to Calmer, I think, to put solar on all of their all of their buildings. But it was it was pretty much uh, I don't think Calmer went forward with it because of there was too many in small places and not enough usage in those places to make it pay, mm -hmm. to make it uh, make it reasonable. That's like their guess. They're uh, they're saying eighty four thousand five hundred and forty six kilowatts per year. Okay. Well, it could be great investment for the town long term for sure. Who's given the rebate and when does that go up as cash? I don't know when it shows up, but it's a government. It, it's a federal, federal government. Federal. Basically, since they can't give the county a tax credit, because we don't pay taxes, right. they do a rebate program for government entities, which is new because it didn't used to be that way. I think this is the first or second year for yeah. So you fill out an application after the project is finished mm -hmm. and you send that off. From what I understand, yes. From what I understand, yes. Are these roof mount or ground mount? Roof, roof mount. Roof. Yes, roof mount at all. Any 
to say? Do we need a motion? I, I would like to move that we uh, approve the solar project for recycling for long-term savings for the county. I would second that. We have a motion and a second to approve the solar project for the recycling center. Uh, is there any further discussion? If none, all those in favor say aye. 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 As opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimous. I just wondered about the winter. We're going to do a roof mount. What, what's your plan for snow in the winter? Did you consider a ground mount so that the snow will go? We've got solar panels on our drop off shed currently. And while the snow will it kind of adhere to them briefly, it, it, it melts off pretty fast out where we're at. Um, you get a lot of sunshine out there, and that dark reflected material with the panels uh, takes the snow yeah, off pretty quick yeah, off the ones we turn. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, there's like a, a dark colored one, and there's a lighter, uh, per, or let's say bill of the yeah. darker color just because of that. And we got a minute or two, Scott. I know we were talking about that briefly before the meeting, but. <clears throat> Uh, you want to tell how, um, everybody how well the recycling program is going on the electronics and the appliances? Oh, yeah, it's crazy right now. Um, we were anticipating, you know, a unit to a unit and a half per day on average. And right now, I believe we're at eight. So, and I'm sure that's going to fall off as people, because we have people bringing in three, four, five items at a time because they just don't know about us. Uh, Evan Neubauer from Conservation has been advertising it, you know, so everybody's finding out about it. And uh, nobody qualms about coming out and giving them this $20 item. They're just glad to get rid of their stuff. I would test to that as Scott knows. He would, uh, yeah, you can get out there twice. <laughs> but I think I think it's great because I think it's it helps bringing all this in getting it from being stored and well and it keeps it out of the ditches and sinkholes yeah. you know it's probably the number one thing you see in a ditch is no washing machine or so you need the old TVs the old, and stuff. The old TV. TV. Yeah. yeah do you still get many of the cathode ray tubes still yeah there's a few not very many it's mostly flat screens but there's a few there's probably oh there may be a dozen of them in the trailer right now out there so they're still out there you know all the leaded glass that comes with it you know that it can go into the landfill that's a good thing yeah that's a great job it's a big win really yeah how are the prices on the rest of the recycling stuff staying pretty good or actually they're pretty pretty good right now uh, cardboard's back up to about 125 for last month i don't know what may is going to be uh our number eight paper is hovering at about 75, which is good for paper. Um, tins at 130 bucks a ton. Um, I noticed that there's a bit of change where you put all your tin, aluminum, plastic, everything in the same bin. It's that at at the drop-off facility in Freeport. Yes. Yeah. We did that for two reasons. Uh, the first reason is just to simplify it for us not to have to dump three or four different containers. containers. We just dump one of them. And that's the way it is throughout the rest of the county. If you go to any of the other drop-off sites, it, it's all mixed together there. So it just makes it, you know, if you come from rural to, oh, I'm just going to drop it off in town today, it's the same thing. You can put it all on the same I always go to the same one. I didn't know right. it's different someplace <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, that's... Uh, that's working out well too. We've gotten some compliments on that. Make it easier. It is a lot easier. I was shocked at how much glass comes in down there, Scott. Yeah, um, I think we get about somewhere between probably seven and eight, nine tons a month. Yes, um, I, I would personally hand, handling glass is dangerous. Um, I would rather it just be gone completely. <laughs> But as long as people want to bring it out there, we'll take it. Does that get crushed before you send it out? No, it goes out just as it is. Yeah. It's a lot of the breaks as people are dumping it into the roll off. Yeah. But uh, they do the crushing with it after. Oh, okay. And I did mention to Scott, he isn't 
obviously it was just this morning, but I know you had discussed about the rural waste and whether it was a program, how much you want to continue or if you want to scale back. And so he's going to do some calculations because we know how much the budget is for the people we pay to do it and the tipping fees and the rent at the sites. But hidden in the cost of that is his time and fuel to haul those, haul some of those containers. So he's going to put together some information so you can know how much you're spending okay. behind the scenes as well as what we spend directly. I'll try and get that off you guys in the next couple of days. That's very, very helpful, Scott. Okay. Well, thank you. Well, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. We always get thanked at recycling for the jobs we do, but we can't do our jobs so without you guys. Yeah. Mutual. <laughs> you have a great staff up there. Yes, yes, we do. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. All right, next on the agenda, a couple miscellaneous items. First of all, a 28B for juvenile detention. <clears throat> I have this. Uh, Mark Baldwin brought this back from a meeting at juvenile de detention. Basically, I think there was some or there's some counties that were withdrawing is basically what you're doing. So adding and they're withdrawing. Yeah. So there's kind of a reconfiguration of what counties are using that agency. Um, Andy reviewed the 2080, it's fine with it. He does he did kind of question and I suppose they just didn't want to go through updating it, but it's still figured on population figures from 1980. <clears throat> <laughs> when they figure out the costs, but you know. And I did ask a clarification on that and haven't heard back. So. Okay. But I don't know that it's going to change. Oh, yeah. Uh, no. no, not this time, but maybe someday they would. The yeah. next time they need to update the 2080, maybe they should update the population figures. I entertain a motion to approve the 2080. I, I motion to approve the 2080. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the 2080 for the juvenile detention. Any further discussion? If none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimous. Uh, next up, we can sign the winner sheet line. Then we'll... FY25 health insurance rates and contract. Just yep. copy them. So I, I did send out a copy of that, or I put some copies in your box, put a few copies over here in case you want to help us see it. Basically, we already know the numbers because we, Brian presented those back in, we're starting the doing budget stuff back in January. And the rates are um, almost the same. We're just a few cents here, a few cents there that are different. So. Um, what we're paying well mark is the same for all practical purposes. And then, but we did increase the county's contribution sum to get extra money in our side fund that pays the difference between the well mark deductible and our deductible because our balance has been going down. So, so we are looking at an increase in the rates that the county pays for each uh, individual or and family plans and then the little bit change in what the employees paid to some of those plans. But um, we just need to make it all official now because we have the contract from one. I move to approve the FY25 insurance rates. Second. A motion and a second to approve the FY25 health insurance rates in the contract. Any further discussion? None, all those in favor say aye. 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 Was opposed, same sign. Here's your answer. 945. Next item on the agenda Sean Schneider, emergency management coordinator. With a grant, that one I can do. That one I can do. Good morning. morning. Disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> Shuffle fingers. Well, good morning, uh, supervisors. Thank you for your time this morning uh, on the agenda. Uh, this will probably be pretty quick. Uh, the more I looked into this, uh, I don't know as if the Emergency Management Commission is quite ready for this grant. Uh, the more I've learned about it since uh, I did the webinar last Wednesday. Um, and I know Stephanie's in here talking about it, so she'll be able to speak more eloquently on the details of the grant. I won't go into that. But I did, uh, what I shared with you, I want you to look at the back page. I, I apologize, Ben, I didn't get your highlighted before I ran out of time, but uh, highlighted a few things here. 
um, that might be able to be beneficial for different departments uh, uh, under your purview around the county. So I just did want to share that with you guys and things to, um, maybe can help pass along. I did, I did talk to uh, uh, your guys' county engineer about this because uh, he's got some ideas. I, I didn't know maybe he's got something that's more, uh, as uh, FEMA calls it, shovel ready that might be more uh, appropriate for this grant than where I'm sitting. Um, for the emergency management side of things, I just want to just have it on your radar. It's something that the I'm trying to work with the commission on. We need to we need to try to improve um, our emergency operations center location, training facility, you know, whatever, whatever you want to call it. But, uh, so that is something on the on my radar. We've identified it in our five year strategic plan as well. Um, just looking for grant opportunities, looking for a way to supplement to, to cover the bulk uh, of, of a cost of something like that. So I don't know if I'll ever find it, but I just want to let you guys uh, be aware of something. Okay. You guys have any questions about anything? Otherwise, I'll be glad to give you back some, some of your time. So the bottom line just of it's just so I think we've got hit that you aren't looking for a letter of support and don't plan to uh, to apply this year, but since we know about it now, maybe you look at another year. Correct. Sure. Yes, and I, I do have a commission meeting. We're gonna do a, a online meeting quick tonight, uh, just to kind of bring them up to speed on this. Uh, and I'm gonna kind of tell them the same thing. I, The staffers that I've been working with on this, they're, you know, they're like, we feel you, you have a uh, valuable project. Um, we feel like you could go ahead and apply, just know that you're not, you're probably going to be at a disadvantage to uh, other uh, other potential uh, seekers that are more shovel ready. So for that, and there's just a myriad of logistics. Um, let's let's say we look at maybe doing a small addition or something on the law center. Well, there's a lot of logistics to work out with the city. I don't want to just assume that that can happen, uh, and maybe that's the best uh, location. You know, so just some. Some things that I've learned in the last four or five days that I got to do a lot of logistics before I get to the point of asking for letters of support. So, so that, if or when our river were to breach today, yeah. that whole city hall is in danger of flooding, correct? Well, technically, I mean, you've got the you've got the levee, so it keeps it out of it keeps keeps it protected with, with the levee. But if the levee were to ever that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's 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 a problem. Yeah, it'd be something. Uh, I know the city's potentially looking at relocating the fire station yeah. and having it attached as a joint project or something like that. Would that be more? Yeah, uh, there's. I, I look at this. Yeah, Bill. Yeah, I look at this yeah. as a blank slate. You know, uh, if there's an opportunity for something like that, it just it's. It grounds me a little more. It probably be a lot easier, you know, without having the dispatch center and stuff down there. But with having that, you know, I got I got to stay close to that. Um, I look at the law enforcement center like a, and this is just me saying this, but like a, a mini university. What I mean by that is there's so much training and stuff that that all of us are required to have. It, it's it'd be convenient to have something down there uh, that's set up like a classroom type type uh, situation. And when you have, you know, when I need to open an EOC, like with the weather that happened in Southwest Iowa and Nebraska and stuff, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I've had a lot of people say, well, why don't you just, uh, you know, work on an agreement with XYZ? Well, sure, I can work that out, but it, when you're working with a private business or whatever, I mean, they, they have their own things going on. Uh, what if they have something going on that, uh, how do you just boot them out of that? Like this is technically an emergency operations center, but what do we do for tables? You know, storage is always a problem. So are we gonna we're gonna store tables and that just crowds takes up space? There actually uh, are uh, I have four eight foot tables in here that I use an election here, but you can be perfect. So you do have tables yeah. and a bunch of chairs. So there is that, but yeah, yeah we I can make do with with anything, but it, it's just. Most of the time, it's out of the back of my vehicle on scene, and that and that and that works well. But if we have a large scale tornado where 
you can imagine this room, there's 15 emergency support functions that make it activated. So that means there's at least one or two people from each one of those support functions that need to come to the center along with all of you, or at least some of you. Uh, it's gonna get pretty crowded in here and trying to have conversations that pertain to each. You see what I'm, what I'm getting at? We can, we can make do with anything. I'm not, I'm not proposing we need a, a Taj Mahal, but uh, to have something that is is set up and ready to go, I think is beneficial. Sean, if yeah. if there was, is there an opportunity? Because you're dealing with everything on city land down there and then and then the, yeah. the conjoined aspect of it. Is there any, is there, is it feasible to have your location, including dispatch in a different place? Yeah, it's very feasible. It's just, uh, just, it all comes down to money. I mean, and you guys never heard that before, I'm sure. But it, it, all, it all comes down to money, you know. Uh, ideally, would I would I like to be someplace that's preferably maybe a little more dry? Sure. Uh, since I kind of got in on the 911 stuff, like our main, I call it the heartbeat of of what we do is in a closet in the saw in the law center there. So if that takes on water, uh, you know. My opinion, that should be up on the roof or out of out of there. There's a lot of things, you know, that I would love to see a collaboration to have a five-year plan kind of worked out. Where one of your big things there is that the jail is there. Yes. Yeah. And you just spent several hundred thousand updating it. Yeah. So you aren't going to be moving the jail anytime soon, which means the sheriff's department likes to be there, which means dispatch works good with the sheriff's department and Sean managing dispatch. So we're all tied together. You're all kind of stuck yep. together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good, bad, or ugly. It's a, yeah. we're all married now. I mean, if you didn't have the jail there and you were thinking, oh, we need to build a new jail, you yep. could do something like Alma Key County where yep. they, it's exactly. out of town, up high, built jail, sheriff's department, emergency management, yeah. all together. Yeah. Yeah, but that isn't the way we no. are. So. <laughs> yeah. Hindsight's always twenty twenty. You know, I don't, I don't remember exactly when that was built. Nine thousand, two thousand. I say two thousand, two thousand one. That's yeah. when I think when the loans were finalized, yeah. so they were maybe yeah. building ahead of time. Yeah. And Dan said he started out old. You know, yeah. 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 You know, that's, that's why they always say hindsight's twenty twenty. you know, it's one of those things, but, uh, it's nice to have these programs. By yeah. The uh, and there's, there's a lot on there. And, uh, uh, I think there's definitely, uh, opportunities for anybody that needs it. So, mm -hmm. uh, appreciate your time. And, uh, uh, I hope you kind of see the vision I'm looking for and, uh, I'll keep looking for grants and, and different opportunities and I'll keep you guys in the loop. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Thanks Sean. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Have a great day. Yep. Thank you. Good to see you. Yeah. Well, I think we're close enough, so we can be. Yeah. Come on up. Next item on the agenda is Stephanie Brown from Volusia County Development, Tourism, and Grant Letter Support. I can send a draft to Ben. Hopefully, he can get it on your letterhead. Yeah. Um, this is for actually Hinson's appropriations program um, on behalf of Sunflower. They're looking to submit an application uh, for equipment. Um, it's above and beyond uh, what they would have originally installed in the center, um, but it's all STEM focused. So there's science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Uh, so it would be literally just targeting uh, that style of equipment. How much is the grant for? Um, they have, so he highlighted the different programs and stuff that are available. We're looking at potentially asking for like a hundred, 130, I think, uh, based on the match requirements. So I may not remember exactly what the budget was. I submitted it very fast as soon as they announced that it was due on Monday. So, okay. yeah. and I was off on Friday, so I'm like, all right, getting it done today. So how, how do you do, where we, where do you come up with a match? Is it a 25% match? Uh, no, it's actually 55% match the program that we have to apply for. Yeah. So I have to figure it out if they get awarded. Um, so all the funds probably we we'll just have the money for it or fundraise for it to backfill it. But we were pretty fortunate. Um, Sunflower was to secure some loans through my energy and Al McKee. REC, 
that were zero percent for 10 years so the gap that we're dealing with at this point we have some time to raise the funds to be able to pay back the loans over time so essentially if if awarded if lucky enough to be awarded um they'll fundraise for it to backfill themselves and they'll have a little bit of cushion to find it but like he had said, um, Sean had said, they're shovel ready. They have to be completed within, ideally within a year. Um, Sunflower was awarded uh, two years ago. I think it was in 2021 when I had looked back um, to buy equipment. So because they're federal funds, they become federal funds. Um, you ideally would use them on equipment or purchase of property, like probably he was referring to or infrastructure because it becomes a Davis-Bacon wage requirement when you start talking about construction and labor. Um, so we steer clear away from that because eventually it's, the Davis-Bacon increases your cost as much as the funding probably does. So we've, we went through that whole exercise, uh, completed a whole federal grant request and didn't submit it because of that. Mm. Road worker cost is $54 an hour. Yeah. So we talked to the, or I talked to the team, her, uh, her team there, and um, threw out a couple of ideas of projects throughout the county. Uh, Ridgeway Fire Truck was one of them. Super interested in helping them, uh, but because it's a federal program, you'll have to bid it, and they've already bid it, and basically signed, you know, like we're gonna purchase this truck. Uh, so federal funds aren't really an opportunity for them. So we've submitted some other um i've been helping them submit some other grants to help backfill their gap for the fire truck it's just this program while hens's team was really excited about helping ridgeway fire department because they already committed to buying the truck they don't qualify so we're like do you want to rebid the truck like could we do something where we could rebid it you know and hundred thousand dollar difference in that truck bid yeah they're just like no yeah and maybe they get that you know and then this is a this is a uh, pennies from heaven style funding opportunity. We were fortunate enough to get it two years ago. Um, and we'll continue to keep trying. You don't win if you don't play. So uh, we're, we're submitting it and hope for the best. And if they get other applications from Winship County, then that's great. So. I would think the daycare would be a plus. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're, clearly we're shovel ready there's a building there right so like buying equipment at this point would be a pretty quick turnaround um i think or i know it would be um for seasons now at this point <clears throat> but if she gets another sort of flashy project submitted then that's just as good the, the application is pretty straightforward i think the trouble is the turnaround time they announced it last wednesday and then they had the, the zoom meeting on on wednesday and then said applications were due on the 6th and then emailed everyone on Thursday last week and said actually applications are due Monday and so, so you might be lucky I was fortunate <laughs> enough to be like hey I'm half done like I was I was you know power through this and you know figure out the letters of support later so that's what we're doing now. I wonder why that last minute change on that um it was a federal change in schedule or timeline like everyone's appropriations had to be submitted by a sooner date earlier date so they said if you could get them by monday at least a rough draft of your project outline by monday um they would have until friday to like mm -hmm. weed out the ones that they didn't think were a good fit mm -hmm. because essentially like her team her committee looks at all the projects they take the ones that they think would get funded or are shovel ready viable they kept saying then they take those and they bring them to dc and at that point they, you know, then the huge group then pulls out ones that they don't want. So the last time we were funded, I mean, childcare was serious, like a serious priority, and it was a pretty um, generic request. It was for funding and or, uh, furnishings and equipment. And so now, obviously, priorities have changed. There's new people in office, and um, so we'll see if this gets pushed through to the final, and maybe it gets weeded out by Friday. I don't even know. I think it's a great effort on your part. I was a crazy person on Thursday. So. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody talked to me. <laughs> yeah, thank you.
put the whole project out there as a cost. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're installing an art uh, installation right now. So I like ran from he there to here and we'll go back, but so. Well, good work. <laughs> putting together scaffolding. Nice. We entertain a motion. I have a motion to support this. Grant. Second. We have a motion and a second to support the grant letter for some our child development discovery center project. Is there any further discussion? None. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimous. Take a copy and give you a letter right away. Sure. With you. you could, yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will say Hens, this team is wonderful to work with. Good to hear. Got her very energetic group of people. She's very passionate about the area. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks again. Yeah. Okay. See ya. What do we have for consent agenda? Uh, check here. Minutes, obviously. Uh, the VA monthly report and a uh, thicker license permit for Barney's Bar and Grill. I'd move to approve the consent agenda. Second. A motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Is there any further discussion? None. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Move to the executive. Mark, 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 Mark. Yeah. I just see his first sentence every time. There's a problem. Especially with the engineer's report comes. Yes. Then you get a, I could just put my. <laughs> <laughs> no fresh food, but. Three months. Yeah. And that, now that can be. Yeah. Any quick. Any reports? I'm going to be speaking at uh, Rotary tomorrow, and you're all invited to attend if you'd like to get invited. And it should be fun at the VFW at noon. On the community building, services building, Mark and I met with Krista on Friday to go through it. Just get a rough idea of what she's looking for, the storage area that's available and stuff like that. We kind of found an area in that storage part of the building. It looks like it's probably between 180 and 200 square feet for their reports and filing cabinets and everything else. That's got to be locked. It's got to be locked. Got to be double locked. Yeah. Filing cabinets got to be locked and the rooms got to be locked. And she thought that was just great too. So you got to keep all the records for seven. seven. Well, they do up to 10 years now, but uh, well, maybe only half of you can, can put it back down to seven. And if you're under 18, you've got to keep them until, I think it's half, seven years after the 18, even. So they could have records on somebody that was, say, 10 years old for a long time, 25 yeah. years. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of, it's a lot of papers to store. It's but she thought that would work really good because there is another room in there where there is other storage. At this yeah, point. same on the same scenario. So, so, so she thinks it's a workable situation. Oh, yeah, yeah. she thinks it'll work really good because there's actually a garage door on that end. So when they have to move all those filing cabinets and everything, they can just back the truck or the trailer or whatever they're right in, in there. And load them, them right there so they're not in there. hauling it all the way through the building. I'd be on the south wall. So well, let's uh, right in there. Yeah. But other than the, the kind of half wall or whatever for the hallway, is there any other construction we need to do on that? No, not not right now. No. We kind of uh, looked at the uh, dividers and stuff like that, and she thought it would be a good idea to utilize those for the time being once they get moved in there. 
instead of building walls and then it doesn't function. You just use the out what you need, you know, a couple months down the line, and then if you have to build something, yeah. go forward with that. Everyone's agreeable to that. It's good for sure. Yeah. All right, it's 1005. Next down item on the agenda, Joey Eno's Burlogging, soil related updates and invitation. Come on up. Think I have a PowerPoint? There you yeah. go. All right, so thanks for having me come and talk to you again today. And so I wanted to just take this opportunity to give you a soil update and an invitation. And I'm framing that. Wait, back. Yes, thank you. I didn't you. mention anything in the change. Um, and I'm framing that under saving our common ground because I think that's what we're doing. Um, that's also the um, title of a guest column that I'm su um, submitting this week um, to local news. Anyway, um, if I could have the next slide. So as I, as you, I'm sure you recall, I was here last year and um, submitted a successful bid to the county land property that's um, upland of Freeport. And those are just some characteristics of that. And I just wanted to first provide an update on that land. So if you could move forward. So this is what that land looked like in uh, midsummer. And I just wanted to let you know it did go through with the CRP program and formally started um, that enrollment in October 2023, which will go for 10 years. I've had um, NRCS and US Fish and Wildlife uh, professionals out there to uh, seek their guidance on proper care for that land. And as I shared last year, I hope you view this as well as a win uh, for the county, public soil, water, human and non-human life. So that's the update along with the next slide, which I'm just highlighting that um, this land meets four of the five soil health principles. The only one that's not um, happening intentionally is integration of livestock, but we're hoping the wildlife uh, that traverses that area can help us out a bit with that. And then, I'm gonna, yeah, next slide, please. So now I'm going to update you on some other things, some offerings I made to you from the last time I was here. And one of them was um, a goal to bring, to seek and bring money um, to Northeast Iowa and in the form of grants. So, and then, I think we'll verify this is animated and I didn't catch that. Just be easier if I pull it. Um, so with this, I've got students in the, in the lab uh, this semester under a grant called Training and Research to Investigate Soil Health for Northeast Iowa landowners. And then this um, was sort of the seed grant for a much bigger one that uh, is a collaborative grant uh, um, that's both internal and external to Luther and involves um, uh, so a water conservation district, uh, Northeast Iowa RCND and area watershed coordinators. And that's going to be publicly announced hopefully within a, a month, but it's, it's a very, uh, yeah, there, there's some big pieces to that grant. Those are some goals and one of them is community engagement. So I just want to highlight something that we've already started. So this is last December in honor of World Soil Day, uh, where we invited community uh, landowners, farmers, uh, soil conservation professionals to Luther and had students both from Laura Peterson's soils class and from my microbiology class present their semester long research projects. And so Laura Peterson's soils class has been intimately I mean, using as a field site, uh, local farm owners, um, uh, uh, land and assessing different soil health practices. And then students in, in my course, so this is, this is one of them, Court Boat here, uh, are spend, they go out to Northeast Iowa soils, they collect soil samples, they bring them back into the lab and they test them for their ability to produce antibiotics. So it's a lesser known fact about soil, but soil microbes produce the vast majority, over 80% of the human antibiotics in use today. So they are the primary source and we're running out of antibiotics. Uh, we're in an antibiotic resistant crisis and there is no pipeline because big pharma has dropped that. And so this is a global consortium that we're in called Tiny Earth. 
and we are crowdsourcing our biotic discovery through student hands and with Northeast Iowa Soils. So a bunch of our soil microbes from Northeast Iowa have been sent to the home base in Madison and are in a pipeline um, towards this objective. Um, some of them, we've had 17 get their whole genomes sequenced. Um, so we're excited about that. Um, and then another offering I made um, last year was to bring to the county uh, inspiring young, that you can um, inspire young people that they, with this work, and you can as well. So they're interested in the environment, they're interested in soil, they're interested in agriculture. Um, they may not come from farms, not all of them, I mean, we, some of them have but they're very interested in these things and just intrigued to meet landowners. And so that's what's happening in the lower figure there. And so, so we're out on the landscape and engaging with landowners and then we're bringing samples back into the lab um, to uh, assess for soil health and other things, including things like antibiotic production. Another opportunity I offered last year was um, had to do with uh, donation of books by both myself and Dragonfly Books to libraries, and I am sitting on a stack here. They are now in the libraries, and these are the libraries that have your names associated with them. I tried to do my best, um, but I can't match exact areas, but uh, there's an inset that shares that in honor of Winship County Supervisor X um, for their care for soil, water, and libraries on these books. So they're available now for all residents um, and spread throughout all the libraries in the county. Um, and finally, the invi invitation part. So I have two invitations to make to you. Um, one is happening this week. Um, this is two years in development and a, including a year of in intensive development. And so it's a performance that merges science and arts called Soul of Soil. And so this is my second collaboration with Jane Hawley, dance professor, and it's also very much in Jeff Denneman, our theater um, and design faculty member at Luther, who has transformed Jewel Theater into literally an underground uh, space. Well, not quite literally, but metaphorically, in an underground space where human bodies are going to become soil microbes. And scientists are going to both do some soil testing and revere soil while 14 women landowners literally elevated above ground move and look on. Average ages might be 60 to 80 of those women landowners. So we think it's going to be a highly unique performance and um, there will also be the opportunity to observe some live microbes and have some um, that are in soil uh, along with lots of access to soil conservation and generative agriculture. Um, materials and resources. So you're warmly invited. That's where you can get tickets. Um, and as I'm looking at that, I'm reminded. Um, so what I would love, if you're willing, I brought this poster and it has the ticket information here. I would love it if it could be posted somewhere prominently in the courthouse. Um, we've got it into several other places um, around town um, and it's in NRCS offices at four counties, um, their resources are um, involved with it, with this. So we welcome you to do that if you're willing. I also, when thinking about it, I'm just going to pass this around. This is soil from the county public land. And I want to see there's green stuff growing on it. You can take a look at its aggr the aggregates that are there. Um, and so I was just out there that this weekend and, and grabbed that um, to share with you. All right, um, let's see. One last invitation. Uh, this has actually come as an outgrowth of all of this work. Uh, this is the first ever Women and Soil event at the Iowa Field of Dreams. And so we are going to be in the event center, which is the restored barn at the Field of Dreams. Um, it's going to be Saturday, June 8th. There's a whole series of great speakers and NRCS folks um, and folks um, from Soil Food Web, Impact 7G, and these other entities. And uh, it's getting, and actually there's going to be a snapshot of our Soil of Soil, Soil of Soil performance as, as the finale of that. Um, I'm also a speaker in there, but the, um, 
this is getting a lot of attention. And so it's going to be covered for three weeks uh, on KCRG's uh, Show You Care series. And it is being covered widely by Dubuque area radio stations daily for four weeks. And they expect to reach 50 or 60,000 people. The barn does not hold that. Um, the barn holds 160, so it's also being live streamed. And so, yeah, this is the, the, the woman who's, who is just absolutely leading the effort behind this whole uh, thing is uh, Leisha Willenberg, who is, who is um, at the NRCS office in, in uh, Delaware County and is also the uh, Women, Land, and Legacy chapter um, leader there. So she is just, I, I can't even believe what she has done with this. So that's a warm invitation to all. Um, and then I just wanted to share, thank you. And that's a picture of a Wichita County farm. Uh, lots of regenerative agriculture practices happen in, in the background. So I'm happy to take any questions or just so many. I think it's interesting that 47% of Iowa land is owned by women. Um, yes, it's also another one of those little known things. <laughs> But that <laughs> this is one of the reasons, and and they're they're a population that, and uh, I'm highly aware of of the um, sort of lack of historical so historical omission and lack of inclusion, especially with uh, outreach and federal programs, and so some of these grants are aligned with that. Um, my own mother, 85 years old, is is meet, has met FSA folks for the very first time within the last two years, and she's trying to manage um, their farm and, and take care of the soil. But that's um, yeah, there, there's work to be done to to catch up um, the women landowners, and and they have a, a really important role. Um, they're they're really interested in collaboration and conservation and. Um, and I would say it's an untapped uh, potential for the state uh, to uh, to do regenerative agriculture and implement it. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you. Next item on the agenda: Matt Murray, Bridge Five contract and other road matters. Come up, guys. Hi. Um, Michael's gone today, as you know, so Matt and I are going to fill in. He does have the report, the engineer's report, which he can read over. And then, as mentioned, we have Bridge 5 uh, resolution to vote on. So. Well, you're passing those out. We'd like to congratulate our two assistants to the engineer for their promotions and taking such an active part in our, in our secondary roads. Well, thank you much. Thank you. We'll try our best. <laughs> Yeah, if you have any questions, let us know. Because I need Dan's signature. And the signature is for the golf course road. It's the final payment. Um, that's down on the bottom underneath Michael's to the left there. Yep. Right here. Yeah. And we realized whatever the what the impact may be on the 28th on, on the bridge with the dog dog survey. Yeah, they did do uh, this is on uh, the road that's south of Jackson Junction going to Wacoma. We did do a dog survey. It was a cadaver dogs. Um, looking for native artifacts, uh, human remains. They did have a hit at one spot. Um, and so they, the uh, cadaver folks have a report. They sent that into the Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, they'll review that. Um, they said once they get that report and review it, uh, they'll issue our permit and the Native American tribes that are interested also have their input. And then uh, we'll kind of go from there and get our check and final plans in and see if they request the tribes can be there they can be present when we do an excavation uh and we also have south bear creek or um, south bear archaeology out of cresco um, already contracted to come in and monitor the site so yeah we're keeping that bridge moving and 
hopefully things will work out for the best. So the start time on that anticipating this. Uh, next year, probably more than likely will be done. Yeah, we it was like a lot of our bridges and stuff. We have them. We had it kind of for this year, but things always seem to get pushed back a little. So, so yeah, we're hoping next year we'll see how it goes. Obviously, if they find remains, I expect it'll slow things up. So, what do the next have to dig previous to the starting the project? They haven't requested that yet. So right now, as I said, you know, that we got Bear Creek and that'll be during construction. But yeah, I expect one of the factors is in the hit that they got is outside of the main roadway. So how much we get going if they find something during construction, how much of a delay that'll be is one of the factors because it's a heavily used road for school and other things. Turkey Valley's just down the road. So it's one of the questions that needs to be resolved before. <laughs> To get too far into it. So that one map showed a lot of hits right along the shoulder of that road. So this one happens to be where this it's on the shoulder, it's by the guardrail. It's the southeast quadrant of the bridge. Yeah. So yeah. Would it be more prudent to actually do a date to find out before it we might be. jump into it, I would think. Yeah. You know, and then not stop in the middle yeah. and go away. We can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're kind of waiting for the Army Corps to do their assessment and then that's definitely a suggestion yeah, yeah. no that seems prudent All right. we have the bridge five contract which we reviewed last week so we'd like to take action on that the uh, brennan construction was the low bid at 7 11 $711,589.89. I think the recommendation by Michael last week was to just award them since they were the low bidder. Move to accept the low bid on bridge five. Second. I have a motion to second to accept the bid from Drenning to construction for bridge five. This is a resolution? Uh, no, I don't think it's a resolution. Okay. I don't have any paperwork for resolution. It's just accept the bid. Is there any further do discussion? Have a contract or a resolution to do? I don't think we don't usually do a resolution. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Anything else interesting, guys? Uh, there's just one item I think Mike wanted to bring up. I don't know if it was in his report, but he is applying for a grant for the locust shop. Um, and so he's, it's got a fairly tight uh, time frame. So he's doing that kind of paperwork and stuff as he does his inspection class. So after hours, he's the one applying for this Henson grant rather than. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. So what's that? New day. Yeah. It's due soon, and I know he's been working on it over the weekend. And I think he said he'd be working on it after the last one, too. But. That would be nice. Yeah, thank you. Oh, it's on the back. Right. Oh, four times a day in this week. Yes. that road vacation and the bridge demolition it's a go uh i think next week you guys are going to discuss that okay. so yeah that's coming up next week or the following yeah. i had a call on the happy hollow um from a landowner he and his sister didn't remember getting notified at all of the vacation do you have any history you remember um, do that? i haven't really been involved with okay. that mike both I'll ask my back. Yeah, and I know he, they were working on that to be in the agenda, you know, in the upcoming week yeah. or two or three. So I'll wait till he gets back. Okay. Thank you. Do we have to approve or like to apply for that grant? 
I don't know. I didn't know he was applying. I, he needs a letter of support. I suppose we can do it next week, but. Yeah, I know he got a letter of support. Um, I think he was with the driftless paper. He's looking for, he needed community support letters. Oh, and so he was okay. working on that uh, with, I think, some other folks too. Maybe since we're a government entity applying, we needed community support letters, whereas if we have a community entity like okay. emergency management or uh, they needed some of you. Yeah, that's my understanding. So he was working on that, and I think you received it. Oh, you got okay. another from Kate saying, All right, they just didn't want anything to hold it up. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Do you have a copy of that contract for Bridge Five that we need to sign, or did Michael sign it? Or? It'll all be digitally signed. Okay. okay. The resolution you just did authorizes mm -hmm. Michael to. Is there a separate resolution paper that you know that you, we had you to do or? We there haven't asked. Okay, that's fine. Anything. I think I think there was a resolution we did when we hired Michael that we had to send to the DOT that allow him to sign digitally on behalf of the county. So that probably mm -hmm. covers it. Yeah. So those in our public and online and audience wise, Mike and Matt have been in our engineering department for many years, each of them, but they were just promoted to, am I going to say the title right? Assistant to the engineers. To the engineer. Yeah. So we thank them for their work and they've been with us for a long time. Glad to keep mine. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you. 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 Yeah, yeah. I have to be honest, you guys are scaring us a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Have a good day, guys. You too. Thank you. You did a good job. Scheduling the timing. So I went on. I tried. I'll point out the road. It looks like a long agenda because it's so many yeah. lines, but there are a lot of short yeah. ones. That was at my first glance. I was yeah. like, oh, wow. And then I was like, oh, hmm. Did. Any more on the roof? Was somebody else going to come up and look at that? Nothing doing that. We have one, one small thing that's going to be done that front entry where we have a uh, the rug over there going in that side door. That's going to be pulled up and that flooring is going to be changed. And that'll happen after hours of this fashion floor here in the near future. John was explaining. It sounds like a good idea, yeah, really. So we end up with kind of a we're close to a trip hazard there, and we don't need that. But that would be nice. Starting to need to mow, and that, that's occurring. Okay, oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, next item on the agenda, ten thirty. M. Ashley and Larry, Rural Oak Sewer, sewer pump replacement. Come on up. Morning. 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 You got some issues? Yeah. yeah. Our pumps were installed last Monday on the center. And they're looking fine. And uh, I had the bill sent to Ben. I don't know if you did. I haven't done it yet. There may be some adjustments on that bill because they had it done throughout as far as this installation. They were going to put some other breakers in, but they were too large for our box up there so check the ones we already had are fine and they're working good these pumps are pumping quicker and this pump time now than before 
If you remember about two months ago ish, Jim was it? Oh, look at that. <laughs> Came in today's mail. Oh. Okay. <laughs> How's that? How you doing? Yep, yep. Uh, Jim was in, they needed these pumps replaced, and you basically said that you're willing to pay for them and then work out the details of how we like to go half. How they could pay back some of it after the fact, but they needed them now, and we've worried about that later. We've so been, we've been nursing one pump for six months, and, and um, I say, yeah, I check it every day, and yeah, sometimes twice a day. So it was about the original quote that you presented in January was nineteen thousand nine hundred and eighty-one and change, and it looks like the bill is nineteen thousand one hundred and forty-one. And change. Okay. Um, they they had it set down. You had the bill there, I'm sure, of six hours for the service call and for both guys. Well, you could take two thirds of that off because they only worked two hours. I mean, they did a good job. They were quick. Um, things went good. What are you gonna do with your time now? That we're gonna check oh, I got we got time. <laughs> We're, Twice a day. We've got to worry about paying the loans off here. The drain field has been a nightmare, which we've been mandated to do. I think. Um, I mean, so it works good, but we had so much trouble getting it to work. That's the most complicated thing. The septic tank, it, you know, it comes down to a collection field uh, and then it goes to the drain to it. Well, we went through three sets of pumps and we had deep those before you got the right power to make them push. It was engineering mistake. Yeah, so they, I, I think their proposal is that they would pay back half. Do you have a time frame? I mean, is that we would like? You, is that okay with the board? We would have to pay, like to pay two hundred fifty dollars a month. Our main concern, well, my main concern, is paying our own. That we're going to pump our septic tank this spring. I probably may we do it every year. It runs about two to three thousand dollars to have that done. So with the new pumps, we shouldn't have as much maintenance costs. Hopefully, hopefully, yeah. yeah. But I think these pumps, I'm not sure, but I think one of the installers said this pump was guaranteed. But I, I'm, don't quote me on that. I'd have to check with uh, his manager, named Brian Frost. But we've had these people before; they've been good. And now the fees you charge for this. Pardon? Mm -hmm. Fees you charge are set that can't be raised. Or... No, no, we, we raised it. From no, we raised it. Um, current quarter, which covered January, February, March, we raised them. So now is it $50 a month or yes. 150 yes. a quarter? Um, so we did. So after coming and talking to you the first time, we did raise, uh, did an additional $5 increase. And I think that's been the third one we've done in maybe about three years. So we're maybe pushing the envelope a little bit on increasing, you know, for the residents. Um, but that will bring in some more um, money, which will help with the bank accounts because, yeah, those loan payments suck up quite a bit of money. But with these new pumps, hopefully we won't have as much maintenance. But we did do uh, an increase. Mm -hmm. And we went from a, a bi-monthly payment to a, a quarterly payment. So we had a longer period of cash flow. Mm -hmm. You always have people who don't pay you right, although we're... We can turn in a special assessment on debt, mm -hmm. you know, on those property taxes. But that takes a while, but get it back, but it might take a while to get them. You know, we've always got about eight to 10, 12 years or so, right? Well, I don't remember, remind me the discussion. At 250 a month, pay back. We're looking at about three and a half, three or so years to pay back. Is that going to work? 39 months. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I think you're 40. So. <laughs> yeah, right. And we're looking at uh, and we, one of the fire trucks or something, we're doing a five year payback. Or, or can we just do it the five year payback? Uh, was that the still zone? Still zone three. three. Still zone three. Yeah, three. Yeah, three. 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 So I don't think it's out of line for what mm -hmm. we're asking for. Mm -hmm. Actually, you may want to check with the city clerks at Ridgeway. And they've done some, some coordination. Do you remember what the spill bill is, Larry? Spill bill sewer charge? I don't, I don't remember what, what spill bill is right now, but each each one of those, Calmer, Fort, Spillville, and Ridgeway have all 
had to make significant increases in both water and sewer rates. I know the sign is, is done yet, yeah, but, but they're looking at more like 60, 60, 65 a bottle. Yeah. So you may, you may want to, you guys are like, you put it in when you did because it got done a lot. I've been the collecting yeah. and building for 30 years and I finally gave it up. <laughs> and all the reports are descending at the USDA. But we start out with forty month forty dollars every two months back in May. Yeah. 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 I think this uh, way we'll stand yeah. out. We wouldn't this is our third set of pumps. First connector pump grinder pumps for our risk tape, right? Yeah. They, uh, they last for thirteen yeah. years. The next groups were nine and eight. This one's about six and a half. Do you want to do it? Mm -hmm. I guess a motion. In the board to pay two fifty a month until they paid half of the amount. Is what, and if, what they're if, so, then if we would increase that amount, we, would pay for it. we don't know yet. I move to make that motion a second. I have a motion and a second to pay for the sewer pump replacement and accept two hundred and fifty dollars a month uh, payback until half of the uh, bill is paid. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those polls, that's a How is the testing going, Larry? Don't do any testing anymore. We can no, 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 I do, no. I do periodical tests just to make sure everything is working properly because I got to switch filters up there. So before I switch filters, I'll take a test, see what my results are, you know, and then maybe like that. But it's been good. I've been doing looking good. So we were real close to being. Online when we mandated this to have the green field. The only thing we didn't do and probably wouldn't you know, work out with was the dissolved oxygen. And we'd never tested that before. That's something new. So we were with our ammonia, we were really close to being, you know. So you know what we were putting in the trick was a lot better. But they think it's the DNR thinks it's a you know, <laughs> and from a logistics standpoint, actually make sure that that 250 payment is somehow different so it doesn't get put in your loan payment account. Right? Yeah, that's 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 that I'll, I'll label it. Yeah, yeah very clearly. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. I know when we were doing the drain field, well, that I, the sewer commission had about $23,000 and reimbursements coming back. We paid engineer fees and stuff like that. And John Lawson asked me before, you know, uh, could I put that in for the loan? And I thought that a good thing to do. In hindsight, it was a mistake. It just didn't really read it and feel the pumps. Yeah. I regret it now. I will say the smaller communities aren't in the or Ecora rates. Continue to climb dramatically. <laughs> so they all do. I mean, yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's not just the smaller the community. communities. It's the, the draw from large too. Mm -hmm. And it's the, I mean, it's the changes in the regulations at the federal level that filter yeah. down through the state and then to the little communities that they have to keep making changes. Where's the one that we suffer the most? Because if there's a big spill someplace on these larger seas, like on the Mississippi and Missouri River, they use their hand slip to grab a big fish or something. They use cross squeeze with right now. Same way with the, the farmers. We're all around fog and get very means. And they're, you know, I've seen them with the manure just rolling out of the fields into the creeks. All they care about is keep milk and keep foot hogs and they don't get their milk. And so but we, if we had that something that spilled, <laughs> we'd get fined for it. So it's I remember which street uh, stream recently, 60 miles worth had fish go. Had all sorts of an N and I can't think of the right. name of it. Out of West Iowa. Right. Too bad. I'll enjoy your extra time now. <laughs> <laughs> sitting here thinking who are the people in our small communities that will continue to do that watchdog work that you've been doing but these two are really good. that's good it's awesome <clears throat>
Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Great class. Great class. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
is a person of finders keepers, you know, what is the deal? And I, those are some things I, I just want to make sure that I've done, give you a complete picture of where I think this is at. So it's movable to it's Monday? I, I would prefer if it was, yeah. this doesn't look like an emergency right yeah. now. Just and just these two guys, if that's the same two guys, did my sister's yard in their neighborhood and asked each homeowner, and they gave the homeowners anything they found. It's a pretty low, I wouldn't call them professionals. They're just two enthusiasts who like to do this. And if they came after hours, how would we even know, you know? Is there any, but I, I would love to hear what you find out. Is there any legal prohibition in the code on, on public land? That's what I'm saying. I, I'm not seeing a prohibition or a requirement that it be allowed. It's just not really addressed here. Like they get it on the fairgrounds and do that area. I mean, it's all accessible to the public. So is our, our land out here, anybody could walk around the yard at the courthouse any hour. It's not restricted. The question is how much digging do you allow? Right. How much you move the deals out of that type of thing? So if you don't mind, we'll put it on the agenda next month. Yeah. Anything else? Just further public's information and so on if people ask about doing whether it's a demonstration or a wedding or a meeting or set up a podium and read, read the bible or whatever it is we've had all of those my response usually is as long as you aren't getting in the way of the people using the courthouse we don't care you don't have to like have your name on a registration or something so just go ahead and use the land as long as they're blocking the sidewalk when someone's trying to get in this happens so but they aren't disturbing anything whereas this is a little different yeah. than digging up holes and things and we don't we don't provide power if they're doing like a speaker system or something but i think the city has a power Outlet. outlet on one of the street lights out front and so they coordinate that with the city if they need to have a okay. audio system or something they do that through the city and get in the middle of that so all right thank you yeah thank you does anyone have anything else okay. to adjourn Motion and second for adjournment. And all those in favor say aye. 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 Is now in <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I didn't notice that. <laughs> Everybody online for attending, we're adjourning now, or we have adjourned.